Good morning, everybody. We've got a mostly lower trade in the grain markets here early on Friday morning. It is 6.30 a.m. Central Time. December corn futures down two and a half cents at 5.67. January soybeans down a half cent at 12.21. December Chicago wheat down two and three quarters at 8.09 and three quarters. December Kansas City wheat down four and a half at 8.23 and a half. December spring wheat down one and a half at 10.52. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, like these videos, help me to grow this channel. If you are interested in some more information from me, visit my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Go to that website, click on grain marketing plan in the upper right-hand corner. I've got a subscription service for $49.99 a month. Uh, almost all my subscribers are farmers or, or people who are uh, involved in, in agriculture in some way, shape, or form. Uh, this includes my morning email, which goes out every business day just before I start these live streams at 6.30, my text message service, my subscriber-only videos. This is a monthly script subscription. It can be canceled at any time. No other feed, no other obligation. Won't try to sell you anything else. If you guys want to know what I'm doing every single day of the week, uh, certainly check this out. The story regarding wheat, uh, GMOs, Argentina, and Brazil yesterday. Uh, the headline was this, Brazil became the first country to allow imports of flour made with GMO wheat. And specifically, we're talking imports from Argentina. I believe Brazil imports a lot of their wheat from Argentina. Uh, it's not likely any at any time soon that, that you see these uh, shipments of, of GMO wheat um, out of Argentina and into Brazil or this flour for that matter. But this is something that has the potential to disrupt global wheat trade. You know, when it comes to corn and soybeans, uh, GMOs have been long accepted by global importers, uh, largely because uh, a lot of those products are ultimately fed to animals, whereas in wheat, um, a, a lot of the product is is directly consumed by humans ultimately, and that's the difference. So to this point, you have not seen GMO wheat. Uh, it, it's just not a big thing. Uh, so this the, the issue here is that you know you've got these groups in Brazil that are saying, hey, we don't want this this GMO flour, we don't want GMO wheat, and if Argentina gets too far. Down down the wormhole here with this GMO wheat and all of a sudden global buyers say, hey, wait a minute, we're not interested. The consumer says they're not interested. It has the potential to disrupt exports out of Argentina, which would have a ripple effect essentially on the global export market. Now, Argentina is not the biggest wheat exporter in the world. Uh, 13 and a half million metric tons is what's projected this year. That would make them the world's sixth or seventh largest exporter. Uh, for comparison, Russia is the world's largest wheat exporter. They're expected to, to export, I think, 30 36 million. So 13 and a half, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sizable number. And if you have importers around the world that just say no to this and they reject this GMO deal, um, it, it could potentially be a friendly factor for the market. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about this yesterday. Um, ultimately it's going to come down to you know, different companies who make consumer products, who ultimately consume wheat, uh, is is the consumer in general comfortable with GMO wheat? Um, uh, this is these are all questions, and, and we don't know the answer to any of this. But it's interesting. So you know, ten years down the road, is is all the wheat we grow everywhere going to be GMO, or is this something that will be firmly rejected? You know, one of the reasons for this is because wheat prices are so high, food prices are so high. Um, we could certainly improve yields and output if we went to GMO. I'm assuming so. Uh, Lots of, of questions here, but this was a, a story that circulates yesterday, and this is this is just the very beginning of this story, and you're going to hear a lot more about this. Rains hit a good chunk of the Corn Belt this week. The the system that um, impacted the Corn Belt is on its way out here this morning. But uh, over the last three days, you saw quite a bit of rain in Iowa, central Iowa in particular, uh, eastern Kansas, eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas. Um, some other places caught some rain, lesser amounts in the eastern Corn Belt. But this thing's on its way out of the east coast. Maybe a little bit of snow over the Dakotas, uh, Minnesota, Iowa here this morning. Next seven days should be fairly dry for most of the Corn Belt. Um, looks like maybe Kentucky, Indiana. Uh, parts of Tennessee may see some rain, a little bit of Missouri, but uh, largely dry, just some smaller amounts here uh, over the next seven days. So, I mean, row crop harvest here is going to wrap up pretty quickly in most areas. Conab released its monthly crop report yesterday. Conab is like Brazil's USDA, basically. They pegged the country soybean crop at 142 million metric tons. That's up from 140, 140.7 last month. USDA is at 144. I don't know necessarily that the difference between Conab's number and USDA's number is important. I think what's important is that Conab is increasing their their 
pr production estimates, and they did the same thing for corn. The, uh, in total, the corn crop was pegged at 116.7 million metric tons. That's up from 116.1 uh, last month. USDA is at 118, and again, I don't think that the difference between CONAB and USDA matters at all. I think that that the take home here is that CONAB is increasing its production estimates for both corn and soybeans. Uh, they're off to a good start in regard to weather. Um, any of these numbers, whether it's the USDA number or the Brazilian numbers, they represent record crops uh, or would represent record crops for both corn and soybeans out of Brazil. NOPA will release October soybean crush data on Monday. Um, we should see a really good looking number here. 182 million bushels is, is what's expected um, in the report that would be up. Uh, more than 18% from September. The record crush number for any month was last October. It was 185.2. So you could be very, very close to that record crush number. And and the crush margins tell you that um, domestic processors here in the U.S., they should be crushing soybeans at, at near maximum capacity here. Uh, they're going to make a lot of money doing it. I've talked at length about the woes of the export program. The, uh, the processor here can pick up some of the slack and certainly has the financial incentive to do so. So you should see a really strong crush number Monday, and I believe you'll see really strong crush numbers uh, for uh, several months to come. Recent rains in Argentina have increased crop potential there. The grain exchange in Argentina said that uh, the greatest progress was made over the center of the agricultural area driven by rains that replaced surface moisture during the last 10 days. Corn planting in Argentina is 29% complete. Soybean planting, almost 19% complete. The rains did cause a, a delay in wheat harvest in some areas, however. Uh, Argentina was the world's second largest corn exporter last year because of that drought in Brazil. They would typically be third behind the U.S. and Brazil, and they are the world's largest exporter of soybean meal. We've got an export sales report this morning. Uh, corn sales expected 700 to 1.4. Soybean sales expected 950 to 1.8. Wheat sales expected 200 to 500. I don't know what China's been doing because we haven't seen a lot of flash sales, yet they continue to come off as, as big buyers in the weekly reports. So they're doing some under the radar type stuff here. Uh, today is last trading day for November soybean futures. Make sure you take a look at any positions you have remaining there. Cattle market was mixed yesterday, slightly lower in fat cattle. Feeder cattle were uh, mostly higher across the board. Cash cattle better this week, 131 to 132 so far. Uh, box beef market was mixed yesterday. And the outside markets were fairly quiet. The U.S. dollar just a couple of ticks lower. The S&P's up about eight. Uh, the Dow's up 90 points. Bonds are flat. Uh, gold's down nine bucks. Silver off just a little bit. Crude oil is down $1.50, uh, just above $80 in that December WTI. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll talk to you Monday morning.